So in my career, I've had the opportunity to train with many world-class athletes. And one training habit that I've noticed in every single one of them that most people don't do is they utilize what I call conversational jujitsu or conversational sparring. Physicality matters in jujitsu, but what matters most is technique. That's why a power lifter can come in and lose to a much smaller, weaker opponent. But often after training for a long time, people lose track of that. If you could upload all of the knowledge of a world-class black belt into a high-level athlete, like a triathlete or a football player, they're gonna be really good. They're gonna be world-class. But the reverse isn't true. If you take someone who's a world-class athlete and you give them the knowledge of a white belt, at best, they're gonna be a very difficult, spastic opponent. So really, the true goal with jujitsu is to update our pattern recognition and our understanding of positions. Of course, sparring is one of the best ways to do this, but the reality is there's a lot of time you can't train in jujitsu. Even if you're training five times a week, you have so much more time that you're off the mat or your schedule could be conflicting so you can't get into the gym or you could be injured. So your ability to evolve your pattern recognition, which has nothing to do with your actual strength, cardio, it's just your brain's ability to time movement and understand where positions are. So your ability to evolve at that when you're not on the mat will massively increase the rate in which you get good because so much of your time won't be on the mat. A lot of people, when they can't train, they like to do like solo drills and things like that. And that can be useful in the beginning, but really what you're trying to learn is the right patterns to do at which time. And that's hard to simulate with a solo drill. And this is where conversational sparring is really good at speeding up your learning process. Basically what it is, is talking to someone who has a similar knowledge as you or working on a similar problem and having conversations about problems you're having in the situation. While it doesn't seem like this is close to sparring, it often will force you to understand the patterns that are giving you a hard time. An example I could use is if I was talking with a white belt to try to help them understand a position. So let's say this white belt is struggling with finishing an arm bar and close guard. The first thing I would ask them is, okay, well, where's your opponent's arms? Like, how are his arms positioned? For a lot of people, just that question right there, the person will go, oh, well, I actually don't really know where their arms are, or I, I guess it's here, and they don't have a clear vision of the position. And what this tells me is they're too focused on the technique they wanna do rather than reading the pattern of the positioning that their opponent is in. So just me asking that question without providing any technical advice or anything forces them to actually think about the hand positioning of their opponent. So maybe they, maybe they do know and they go, oh, okay, well he has one arm high up on the lapel and one arm low on the hip. Him telling me that would make me go, oh, well actually in that situation, arm bar is hard to do. Often there, I focus on breaking the collar grip like Hodger Gracie would and drag the arm across the body and chase towards the back. So without us even stepping on the mat, he's identified hand positioning situations that are giving him a hard time, a possible solution. But of course, if I'm like a black belt coach, I can give him advice, so that seems unfair. But even if it's you and another white belt in the gym, just you two having a conversation uh, about a position you're struggling with, or if you're purple belts and you're both trying to learn the bolo, as you guys engage in conversations, you will discover spots or like gaps where you don't know things. You'll go, oh, I grabbed the hip and I tried to invert. And then your friend says, was he turned into you or was he turned away? And you don't even know that that's a cue. And then as you dig into these conversations, it elicits problems in your game and often brings out solutions that you can consider trying. And it'll also help direct what you can be looking for in future instructionals and sparring.